So in this video, we're going to concentrate on the foundation tier. Now this is going to set the scene for the whole helix. Here we are on the southern end. This will be where the first helix will be built up going from level one up to level two. Some of the data behind this helix is basically the radius will be 920 millimeters. That's roughly between 36, 37 inches. Between the levels, it'll roughly be about 500 millimeter or 20 inches. The heights between, I guess, each of the, the tiers of the helix will be 100 millimeter or roughly four inches. As you can see in front of me, uh, basically I've cut out all my pieces. I've sort of split uh, each tier into one eighth pizzas. Um, that's just due to the size of it and trying to get the most out of the sheets of plywood that I'd ordered. You can see here I've actually cut out the centerpiece. This was just to give me some of that emergency access if I needed it along the way. So the approach that I took with cutting out these pieces, now there's eight pieces to each tier of the helix and there's going to be four to five tiers getting up to level two. This is what I used as my jig for my router to sort of get all my pieces uh, exactly the same. Um, how did I do that? I've got a piece here that I use on the router, it's a router bit, and what you'll see here is it's got a guide. Now keep in mind, it goes in the router that way, so the guide's at the top, and what that sort of did was, I screwed it down onto the, the plywood sheeting, and then from there, set up the router, so that would have been the guide going around all the way around this template and that's pretty much what I did for each piece. My approach to this is I am going to use wooden supports around the helix. Another approach that I'm taking when building this helix, in an earlier video I talked about super elevation, how I'm going to approach the super elevation or getting that camber. The, the outside support block is going to be higher than the inside one So I get past tier one get onto tier two, three, four, and so on. All these blocks are gonna be the one size. Also to help with the, the elevation. Now I'm roughly running 1.8 to 2.3%. You know, not everything's perfect, and I guess in the real world, you know, it's very hard to get a, a perfect outcome. But I was quite happy between those two figures, uh, and what I was using was a, a leveler but I've got an electronic one here that also tells me the percentage uh, of those rises and falls, etc. I broke it up into quarters, and what I did was, well, the opposite to the 100 mil would be 50 mil. Uh, in between the 50 and the 100 would be 25 mil, and then 75 on that far end. I started there, I got these blocks measured and cut. I also had to put a, about a 1.5 degrees cut on the top because keep in mind the helix tier one is slowly going up around the 1.8 to 2 percent mark. From here what I'm going to do is just show you in real time putting this first piece in for the tier one and then obviously I'm not going to go through each section and bore you to death so I'm just going to speed that up. I'll get to the seventh piece on the opposite end over here I'm not going to get and put uh, the eighth piece in yet because obviously that comes over where the track enters and I need access to lay this track in. We're over at the first piece here that I'm going to install. Uh, I've, look, I've made a bunch of previous modifications over here, uh, especially I guess where this first piece comes down and meets the baseboard. Uh, you can see here, this stuff's not attached as yet and I've sort of made some previous measurements, looked at the percentage of the rise where I'm sort of comfortable and I've had to, you can see here, I've had to make a cut. These supports are in place. I've had to make uh, custom cuts on how far I wanted it to come up and that is going to be where it gets screwed into and then I have my other supports down this end. The first quarter was 25 mil, so what I did where these eighth joins are happening, I then halved that between the two, so 25, zero, and I made this, you know, roughly 
12 to 12.5 mil. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure things are square. Uh, I've already got my holes pre-drilled where I'm attaching onto these support. I will hold them in place with a screw, but I will come back later underneath and just give it a little bit more support. But right now, a couple screws just to hold it in place is going to be sufficient. Now please remember this is my approach. Uh, I'm not here saying this is the way to do it. This is just the way I'm doing it. And uh, hopefully, you know, you'll get a few ideas and either use some techniques or come up with a whole bunch of new ones after looking at how I've sort of put it together. So I'm gonna get this in place. I've got the screws underneath ready to go. I'm just gonna make sure we've got things square, because that's one of the things as I go around, just to make sure I've got the, the boards squared off so they don't get misaligned and then you know uh, you get to the top and it's you know some distance off where it should be. And what I'm going to do is just make sure this other side is square before I screw this final one in. Now I'm going to just work up to this other end, get things in place and then I'm going to take some measurement. That's good. Now I'm just gonna make sure my blocks are roughly 50% under this first one, and then allows 50% for the next board to go on top. Memory serves me right. I'm gonna get another long screw because I've got an actual, underneath I've got a beam going across. So I'll need a longer screw, but I'm gonna hit it from the top going all the way through. And there you have it, that's piece one. So now it's just a process to get the boards on, get them square to the outside perimeter and then getting them screwed in place.